All of you, but maybe four of you, have received the gospel track. That message can change your life. Let me ask you, how many born-again Christians do we have in this line? Let me see your hands. Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight of you that profess to know Christ, to, to believe in His gospel. That's, that's what a Christian is, is a bond slave and an ambassador of Christ. And uh, I pray that you truly are born again. If so, that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. So the first half of this message is going to be for those of you that profess to be a Christian. And then the second half, Lord willing, will be for those in line that do not, that are not. Uh, I'll be more happy to answer any questions, absolutely, as soon as I get done with this message. Yes, sir. Uh, last Wednesday, I preached in, uh, through the, uh, the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Uh, verses 1 through 5 was uh, fleeing sin and not being partakers with those uh, that, that are continuing in their sin. And then verses 8 through 14 is that a Christian is supposed to walk in the light. And a true biblical light actually shines the light on sin and exposes sin. Because love warns. And then today is going to be verses 15 through 21, which is walking in wisdom. Walking in wisdom. And beginning with verse 15, See then that you walk circumspectly. Here Paul's talking to those that profess to know Christ. He's talking to Christians. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. This word circumspectly in the Greek means to walk Perfectly, to, to walk exactly according to God's word and God's will. Though nobody can be perfect, but he has a high standard that we strive to walk in his perfection. To strive to walk that way. One commentator described it as a soldier in a minefield trying to not step on a mine lest he blow himself up. And that's the way God wants Christians to walk in this world. And then it says, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. This word drunk is the Greek word methusko, which is an inceptive verb, which means the mere process of becoming drunk is an actual drunk. Again, God's standard is higher in the Greek than it is in the English word. So he doesn't want us to even be in the process of intoxicating ourselves with any form of intoxicating drink because it alters the mind and impairs our judgment. And the contrast to being drunk, Methusco being in the process of becoming drunk, the contrast to that is being filled with the Spirit. It's impossible to be a Spirit-filled Christian if we're filling our bodies with distilled spirits. Is the best way I could explain that passage. And he says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and, and making melody. And then the, I'm going to drop down to the last sentence where it says that a Christian is to submit to one another, to submit to Christians that are truly Christians and fear of God. Because it says in Proverbs 1 7 that the beginning of knowledge is the fear of God, the fear of the Lord. Now that's my first part of the first, that's the end of my first part of the message. And then here's the part for those that do not know Christ. For those that aren't professing to know the Lord. The truth is, my friend, because love warns, I'm here to tell you that you've sinned, just as I have. And when you die, you're going to be judged according to God's holy standard. Uh, the, the Ten Commandments, for example, that's some of the standards. Uh, Thou shalt not lie. Just one little lie will keep you out of heaven and condemn you into hell. I've lied. I'm guilty. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus said, if you've lusted for another woman, you're an adulterer. Thou shalt not murder. Uh, racism is murder. Jesus said in Matthew 5, if you have hatred towards anybody without a just cause, you are a murderer. And so it goes on. Strife, envy, jealousy, greed, contention, a coveting. All of these laws, uh, almost all of us have broken them all. But all of us have broken at least one. And God says that he will not allow sin to go unpunished. And that he will cast anyone that's broken God's law and that's sinned against him, he will cast them into hell for eternal, eternal hell under the wrath of God. Now here's the good news. The good news is the gospel, folks. The gospel is that God created a remedy for you so that you can escape the wrath of God and flee through the love of God. Flee from your sin and flee to Christ for salvation because God, 
God came to us in the form of a man, conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the virgin birth, Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man, the second person of the whole Trinity. Jesus Christ then went to that cross where he died of a bludgeoned, brutal death for those that would repent and believe, for those that would become his church. He died for his church, folks. Will you be part of his church? And then Christ went to the grave. And then he was buried in that tomb. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. He bodily rose from the grave. And then he ascended into heaven, folks, where Jesus Christ will intercede on your behalf if you become saved. The Bible makes it very clear, folks, that if we, Jesus said in Mark 1.15, repent and believe. If we repent in that message and believe in that. And the word believe in the Greek is the Greek word pastu, which means to be entrusted to Christ. So I'm pleading to you, folks, to repent and put your faith and trust in Christ alone for salvation. If you do that, if you call upon Him for salvation, the Bible says you will be saved. Now, I may open it up for any questions. Gentlemen, I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Sir? I'll be more than happy to answer your question. I didn't have a question. It's just that you, um, I think it was kind of insulting to say that only the people that you gave that card... Uh, Christians? I never said that. Well, what did you say? Those, those that raised their hands said they were Christians. Okay, so you assume that everybody else that didn't accept what you said or not? Uh, sir, I can't, even, I, can't even, I can't even say that those that raised their hands are truly saved. I made that clear. And no, I'm not assuming that if nobody rose their hand that they're not saved. But, but the Bible makes it very clear that if you deny Jesus Christ before men, I will deny you before my Father. But if you confess Jesus Christ before men, I will confess you to my Father. Uh, so, sir... And you claim to be a minister. Of the, you claim to be born again, you told me earlier. I didn't say nothing about born again. So you're not born again. I'm a minister. Okay, well, I, you know, you could be a minister for Satan as far as I know. Jesus said you must be born again of the water and the Holy Spirit. And, 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 uh, if, are you a Christian man? Yeah, I'm born again and I'm telling you the truth. Hey, listen, listen. So listen, Jesus said, I tell you, you must be born again. This man says he's a minister. But Jesus said, unless you are born again of the water and Holy Spirit, you will not inherit the kingdom of God, folks. That is true love that I would warn you. Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, Matthew 7 verse 21, that many people will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, haven't I prophesied in your name and done many wonderful things in your name? And then Jesus Christ will say, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, for I never knew you. Thank you, sir. So ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is very clear that the wages of our sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. If we don't have enough courage to stand for Christ, then we're not saved. Because Jesus said in, in Revelation chapter 21 that the spiritual cowards will be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and leave. Those of you that are Christians. <laughs> All right. You know what, folks? The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. No, that is not. And for those of you that don't like the gospel, that's because you're perishing in your sins. And I can't, I can't explain enough how much I love you that I'm concerned. No, you don't. That you won't spend. I don't want you to spend any eternity in hell. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to repent and believe. I want you to respond to that gospel message. I'm pleading to you to come to Christ. I'm warning you to come to Christ, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know Christ, you will perish in your sins. He is the one that can reconcile you to the Father. Christianity, you would have listened. Like Jesus listened. You would have listened. Yeah, you know what Jesus did? He went out and told him, like Luke 13, 3, repent, otherwise you will perish. That's what Jesus said. He said to Mark 1, 15, repent and believe in the gospel, sir. That's what Jesus said. I respect that. Okay? But you don't listen. Yeah. All right. How you doing? Oh, thank you. Very brave man. I love you. You're a Christian? Uh, something like that. I, just, I do believe in God. I do believe in Jesus, but right. you're very brave. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. It's it's it's, it's him. It's not me. Yeah. I love you dearly. Everybody gets attacked when they try to preach about Jesus. You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, but you got the track I gave you, right? Yeah. I have it. Okay. Please read that. I mean, God, God's obviously drawing you closer to Him. I believe. And um, call upon him and, and beg him for mercy, beg him for salvation. He saved a knucklehead like me, and I, I, I'm just a wicked sinner. I don't deserve to be saved, but he did. 
and uh, he can do the same thing for you if it's his will. I love you so much for that, okay? God bless you.